Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to bring you the winning ingredients for your Thursday night football showdown between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Minnesota Vikings. But before I deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessengeSD. And guys, sign up for the Patreon, all right? I'm going to be posting some of the winnings for some guys um, from this week. Also, some winnings from the game that happened that just passed between the Patriots and the Bills. That will be going up. Um, so, guys are winning over here, man. Join the Patreon. It's only $7.99 a month. You're getting DFS uh, breakdowns right here. You're getting fantasy advice. You're getting DFS. You're getting uh, betting as well. All that comes incorporated. If you need any help, please sign up. Follow me on Instagram, and I will get in, back in contact with you, all right? Follow me there, and then you can message me, and obviously, I will get back to you in a timely fashion. Now, let's deep dive into this game between the Steelers uh, who had a very encouraged, very encouraging win against the Ravens and the poor, lowly Minnesota Vikings, who just lost to the worst team in the football league, and that is the Detroit Lions. That was an embarrassing performance that last drive, um, and they they deserve to lose. They really did. They played off coverage on that last, but you can see I'm scoring from that. That's all right. All right, let's get into this. Okay, now. Looking at this captain position, we have a very bad Vikings defense to quarterbacks, to running backs, to every to wide receiver, to everything. Okay. This is a very poor defense. Obviously, you saw what the Detroit Lions just did to them. So what we're going to focus on, and it, I usually do not do this. I usually do not do this. Some of the captains we're going to look at, we can kind of put in Ben Roethlisberger. Currently, he's questionable. He's probably going to play this Thursday. Um, listed as a non-participant Monday. We'll see. Um, if things progress or things get worse, um, it's probably a maintenance day for, for Ben Roethlisberger, but we can put Ben Roethlisberger in the captain spot, um, for this game, just because of the matchup. It's very, it's a very great matchup for him. Um, him and obviously the wide receivers that he has at his disposal, we'll put Ben Roethlisberger in the pool. He's not my favorite captain, but someone we will have to consider uh, because of the matchup. All right. QBs currently going up against, well, fantasy points allowed to QBs that the Minnesota Vikings are allowing are currently, let's go over here. We'll go to the QB selection. We're going to flip it around and they're pretty bad. Okay. Right here, 27th in the league. Um, it's gotten worse as of late, um, allowing 268 yards passing, 1.8 touchdowns per game, almost two TDs per game. Okay. Then that's what you need from Ben Roethlisberger. You're probably going to get, you need a back and forth game environment, which probably can happen in this game. I'm not looking at defenses here. Um, Pittsburgh has been struggling as of late, and the Vikings has have been struggling as of late. So we can see a big back and forth type of game going on here. So Ben Roethlisberger is a captain. Next guy we're going to look at will be Justin Jefferson. With the injury to Adam Thielen, he's obviously the number one anyway. Now with Thielen out, um, we're currently questionable. We'll find out more news. Just be very vigilant on that. Justin Jefferson is, he's going to get an absolute amount of insane, ridiculous amount of targets. That's not even a word. What I just said did not make sense, but he's going to get a ton of targets. All right. Justin Jefferson had a very good performance against Detroit. 11 receptions, 14 targets, 182 yards. That is insane. Wow. One TD and chipped in with some rushing ability. Finished with 38 fantasy points. Um, there's no corner that can hold this man. These elite type of wide receivers, you would need um, you need Belichick to try to stop um, Justin Jefferson or Devonta Adams or the, any of these top tier wide receivers. Justin Jefferson should have a very good day going up against Pittsburgh. He's going to have a lot of eyes on him, but that's fine. Kirk Cousins will be able to get him that ball. Dalvin Cook is going to be a candidate for the captain spot. We're waiting on news for him. He was a non-participant Monday, so it's either going to be Dalvin Cook or if he's out, then we'll go back to the Alexander Madison train, and he's down here at 9,800, okay? Uh, a little bit more if you put him in the captain position, but whatever which one starts, we're going to put in as a captain. Definitely a good matchup. 
for both of these guys that they got. All right. That's one of the weaknesses to, to the Steelers is allowing a lot, a lot of rush yards to opposing running backs. OK, so we'll focus in on him. We got Cook. We got Madison. We got uh, Ben Roethlisberger in here. I'm not really looking at Kirk Cousins. Pittsburgh has a, a decent defense um, against opposing quarterbacks. And I think Kirk Cousins definitely, he, he's very wishy-washy. He has this weird thing where he has a good game and a bad game, a good game and a bad game. Look at this. Look at this. Good game, bad game, good game, bad game. It goes all the way almost at the beginning of the season. He had a great three games, and then it's just bad, bad, good. Bad, good, bad, good, bad, good. And it, and then it's looking like a trend. But um, the Steelers' defense, obviously, they just have to focus on Justin Jefferson and try to hone in on the running game. So I'm going to lean towards staying away from Kirk Cousins. If, it, if Adam Thielen was healthy, then I would definitely put him in the pool. But with Adam Thielen out, those are some... That that's kind of hampering to this offense. Obviously, they have to lean on some other guys, and we'll talk about them very very soon. But it's not a, a big huge play for me. Okay. Um, next will be Deontay Johnson. He's coming off a great performance against Baltimore. Individual in division rival had eight receptions, eleven targets, and a hundred and five yards with two TDs. Very good performance out of him. 33 fantasy points. That was uh, his, his best performance all year long. Let's see if he can put it together and have a back-to-back -back game like that. Um, the, uh, the possibility is there with this defense. So there, there's definitely ways you can go between Deontay Johnson and someone else I like to talk about is Chase Claypool. This man has been uh, very up and down all season long. He's the big play guy. And with the type of defense that the Minnesota has, where they leave guys open either by accident or just because they suck, Chase, Cape, Chase Claypool can be a big, big X factor in this game. Definitely take the top off the defense. Well, he only has one TD all season long. I think this is the perfect environment for him to have a big boom week. All right, to beginning to the to the beginning of the week fourteen uh, season. Okay. So Chase Claypool will be in the captain slots as well. So we got a ton of captains here. We got Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, Alexander Madison, Ben Roethlisberger, Deontay Johnson, and Chase Claypool. Obviously, there's one more guy. You can't forget about him, and that's Najee Harris. All right, Najee Harris is the lead target getter and uh, rushing running back that they have for this offense. He's the whole offense right here. All right, they lean on him a lot. All right, 21 carries, 71 yards. He also chipped in with five receptions and five targets on 36 yards receiving against Baltimore. Um, this matchup is also another great matchup right here. Rushing defense is 29th. That's the Minnesota rushing defense. So Najee Harris should have a, a field day going up against this team. So, like, anything Pittsburgh is a very good play, okay? Anything Pittsburgh is a very good play that, that we're seeing right here, just going off the track record of Minnesota. So all these guys are viable at that captain position. All right. You're going to have to make a multiple of um, lineups. I can't really key in on one guy here because it can go different ways. Uh, Deontay Johnson just had a great game. It could be Claypool. It could be Najee Harris. It could be Justin Jefferson. So you got to you're going to have to diversify. OK. Let's go to our tier two, tier three type of guys that we have in our lineup bill. Um, next will be Pat Fryermuth, the tight end for Pittsburgh. He's come on as of late. The rookie tight end, Baby Gronk, um, had some big performances in week 12 and week 11. Um, didn't get in the end zone against Baltimore, but the targets are still there. Four, four, seven, nine, and six in the last uh, five games. Pat Fryermuth is having a very strong um, second half of the season, and we're definitely going to put him in our play pool as a mid-range flex play. I like him there. Um, Tyler Conklin is the tight end for the Minnesota Vikings. They're going to be looking at him with the injury possibly to Adam Thielen. Remember, if he's out, then we're going to have to go to Tyler Conklin, to K.J. Osborne, and to D.D. Westbrook. Those are going to be our options. We have to be very, very mindful. Conklin has been very exceptional as of late. 
Um, seven receptions, nine targets, 56 yards last week. He had a great performance against the the Chargers in Baltimore a couple weeks prior to that. But um, he's very sure-handed. Not much of a you know speed demon there, but has decent hands and okay speed. Okay, Tyler Clonkin at 6,200 is definitely someone we can look at. Um, cheaper down the line who we're going to fit in. K.J. Osborne is now the number two wide receiver if Adam Thielen's out. He came in, um, obviously, because Thielen was out, chipped in with four receptions, seven targets, 47 yards, and one TD. He had some big boom weeks earlier in the season. Week six against Carolina, he had six for 78 and a touchdown. Also, in week two, he had five for 91 and a touchdown. And in week one, he had seven for 76, okay? This man has some upside here. I like the prospect of K.J. Osborne. They finally found a decent wide receiver three. A little bit inconsistent, but obviously he's a very young talent. All right, so K.J. Osborne is someone we're going to look at. Both defenses are not going to be viable. Not trusting Vikings defense, definitely. And Steelers defense could be a maybe because we know how Kirk Cousins likes to turn over that ball. But we're going to stay away from that as well. Both kickers will be viable uh, in a high-scoring affair. I like the, both of these teams moving the ball up and down the field. And if they can't get an end zone, we got Greg Joseph and Boswell. Boswell in the dome. Um, obviously, he's used to kicking in some bad weather, but he's a very good kicker. 96% um, kicking rate this season. Very exceptional. And obviously, in the new in, in a new environment in the dome, uh, Chris Boswell will be will be a very good play as well. So both kicker both kickers, but if I'm leaning towards one, it will be Boswell. Let's see if we have some cheaper options down here below. Ray Ray McLeod, if we're looking below the kickers, um, he's the number three slash four wide receiver between him and James Washington. He's more of the the gadget guy. Um, he can catch a ball in the space and take it all away. He has that type of speed. So at 3,200, someone is getting decent amount of targets. At four in week 13, two in week 11, and 12 in week 10, you see the upside there. Ray Ray McLeod is someone we could consider, okay? Getting a decent snap share. Um, continue to going down below. I spoke about D.D. Westbrook. He is the number four um, wide receiver, technically now the number three wide receiver if Adam Thielen is out. Um, he had two targets last game, didn't do much with it, but things can change. Obviously, the game plan um, and going against the Pittsburgh Steelers, we'll see if they'll be able to get the number three wide receiver open. But we obviously love and favor Justin Jefferson and K.J. Osborne for Thursday. Someone to consider, okay, D.D. Westbrook. Other than that, um, we can look at Nwangu right here, the backup running back. That's if um that is if Dalvin Cook is is out and then it'll be Madison and Kenne. But if not, then we can just forget about him. And the cheapest I would go would be D. Westbrook. Okay. So we're gonna focus in for this Thursday night football game on Pittsburgh side, all their offensive talent because of the Minnesota struggles um on the defensive side of the ball. We can bring it back with obviously Justin Jefferson, KJ Osborne, and either Dalvin Cook or Alexander Madison. Just remember those guys, all right? Let me know in that comment section down below if you have any other suggestions at the captain spot or at uh, the flex position, all right? Let me know in that comment section. We'll go back and forth. We'll find some gems. Uh, but I think we really solidified some of the options. But pay attention to the news because we have some big uh, questionables on both sides of the ball, all right? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD, and I'll be back with another video very soon. Peace out, guys.